Hi everyone, Alien Theory here. I hope you all had a good Christmas or holiday season, whatever you happen to celebrate. I hope you were able to spend some time with friends and family, get together, eat some good food, hopefully not interrupted by somebody slumping over the table giving birth to an alien parasite. I hope you got some good gifts. If you happen to get anything alien related, please leave a comment. And I hope 2024 is a good year for you. For fans of all things alien, it should be a pretty exciting year. Some good stuff is right around the corner. I was actually pretty excited to see the recent news that there's going to be a little golden book release. A is for Alien, an ABC book. This is an officially licensed book from 20th Century Studios that seems to be a child-friendly retelling of the original film. This is the synopsis. In space, no one can hear you giggle as you read this little golden book featuring the characters from the classic movie Alien. Follow Ripley and the rest of the Nostromo crew on a space adventure that introduces the alphabet from A to Z. With fun illustrations, this light-hearted reimagining of the iconic movie Alien will delight fans young and old, as well as little golden book collectors throughout the universe. I love when they do this kind of stuff. I think it's pretty charming. Whether you get it for novelty's sake or for the little ones in your life, it's really amusing to see Alien from this kind of an angle. The Alien Next Door and Jonesy Nine Lives of Nostromo were big hits with my godson, so I'm glad there'll be more for us both to enjoy. That's coming in July, so still a bit of a wait for that, but if you happen to be interested, it is currently available for pre-order. A little closer to release is Alien Uncivil War by Brendan Deenan, the next release from Titan Books after this month's Aliens Bishop. This is set to release in April, and here is the publisher's summary. This alien story begins where most end, with a xenomorph loose on a damaged spaceship hurtling through space. Once a highly decorated marine, Chris Temple, a recently widowed single father of two young daughters, Jane 11 and Emma 8, is on board. Despite his particular set of skills, Chris doesn't get involved in the fight with the alien, instead focusing on keeping his children safe as the ship comes in for a crash landing. The family lands safely on an idyllic outpost planet where Chris is told that the ship has been destroyed beyond recognition and nothing could have survived the crash. That's only the first lie. Chris and his daughters love their new life, but something doesn't feel right. Chris is a paranoid type, but just because he's paranoid doesn't mean he's wrong. There are nasty surprises in store as Chris investigates the web of lies and conspiracies. After leaving a ruined Earth, it seems Chris and his daughters have crash-landed on a planet on the verge of an all-out civil war. Chris will have to call on the battle skills he never wanted to use again in order to protect his daughters, deal with the violence-hungry marines, and battle the xenomorph that's killing people regardless of which side of the civil war they're on. Not much is known yet beyond this summary. I'm not really sure where this lands timeline-wise, but it could shape up to be a good thriller with a one-man army badass type demolishing anyone who comes in his way. Sort of a Taken or John Wick meets Alien kind of thing, I'm thinking. So I'm looking forward to hearing more and hopefully finally reading the book when it comes out. It's coming in April, so with the April release, we'll definitely have something ready for Alien Day, which of course falls on April 26th. It's looking like the new Aliens documentary, Aliens Expanded, is aiming for an Alien Day release as well. This is a huge celebration of Aliens, and of its fans, from the makers of In Search of Darkness and In Search of Tomorrow, directed by the great Ian Nathan. They've released some new glimpses of the documentary, giving an idea of the look and feel throughout. The Aliens aesthetic is very much in line with Cameron's film, and I've been in touch with the filmmakers, and it's looking like it's really shaping up. It's in the editing stages, so all the interviews are captured, the gang's all there. Jeanette Goldstein, Lance Henriksen, Michael Bean, just to name a few, and tons of interviews with the people behind the movie and its devoted fans. I'm in there somewhere too, if you're interested. I'm excited about this one, with maybe a hint of bias. I know there was a big social media demand from fans to get Paul Reiser on board, but I don't think that worked out, unfortunately. So as far as I know, he isn't part of the documentary, but I follow him on social media, and I know he's a busy guy, he's been touring for months, and apparently, he has kept his own little secret when it comes to aliens. Until very recently. Not too long ago, it was announced that in March, we're going to be seeing a new one-shot story released in three issues from Marvel, bringing the world of aliens into their popular What If series. Riser himself has had a hand in writing the story for this comic, which we'll be asking, what if Berg survived? Here's the synopsis. 
For years, fans of James Cameron's legendary aliens questioned whether Carter Burke, a company man more hateable than the Xenos themselves, had actually survived the traumatic events on the terraforming colony Hadley's Hope. Now the actor behind the beloved villain, Paul Reiser, joins his son Leon and the star-studded team of writers and producers Adam F. Goldberg, Brian Volk-Weiss, and Hans Rodinoff for a journey back to Hadley's Hope and the twisted escape of a man who should have died. This should be very interesting, and all the more exciting that Reiser is involved. Exactly how they would be going about the story I don't know, but something tells me it may involve his original plan of exposing Ripley new to the facehuggers and sabotaging the cryo chambers of the remaining marines going off without a hitch. And it would be interesting to see if and how karma comes for him eventually in some way, or if he ends up riddled with guilt, or if he becomes an even more insufferable bastard after rising up in the company due to his success. It could go a few different ways. I'm really curious, actually, and while I have to be totally honest and admit that since Marvel got the rights to Alien, my interest has been kind of waning in and out, depending on the story, this has me the most amped up I've been since the news of the first story, Bloodlines. Only three months to go before that's released, so look out for that. But obviously, my biggest anticipation lies with the upcoming release of the new Alien movie from director Fede Alvarez, Alien Romulus. The release is still set for theatrical release August 2024. So far, no production stills, no trailer, nothing. Part of me likes it all that way, keeping a good deal of mystery to it, but another more impatient part of me wants to fucking see something already, come on. 20th Century Studios couldn't release a Planet of the Apes teaser soon enough, yet with Alien, there's nothing? How much more do we have to look at that clapboard image from last year? Give us a little glimpse already, we're more than ready for it. But if there's one thing you can say about Alien fans, it's that they are patient. And this isn't a franchise like Star Wars or anything, where there's an abundance of new stuff and frankly more than I know what to do with, it's a little fewer and further between. Which I like, since you can value what you get even more, at least if it's good. I thought Prometheus and Alien Covenant were good, though I am well aware others did not, and have probably been waiting for a really long time now for a resurgence in quality of the Alien series. But we can look at this as a fresh start. We have a new direction now. This is something different from the Ridley Scott prequels. This is an exciting new vision from director Fede Alvarez. It could be something very special. And it's been a good six years or so now since Alien Covenant, so we've been waiting and waiting for something new. I hope it's worth it. I haven't given up hope. 20th Century Studios has proven to keep up a very nice continuity since Fox was dropped from it and the roads led to Disney. But you know, I've come to realize that I don't really consider it a Disney production anyway. I wouldn't fear comparisons to the current state of their kid-friendly content and Star Wars and Marvel. This is something different. This is alien. This is a unique beast catering to different tastes. We're not going to see the Disney castle as the lights go down. We're going to see the 20th Century Studios logo. We're going to hear the iconic fanfare that preceded Alien movies of the past. And we're hopefully going to get something that takes us to the deep, dark corners of space where no one can hear you scream. I implore you, don't give up hope. And there's always the Alien TV series from FX to look forward to. That won't be 2024. By all reports, it's slated for a 2025 release. But I imagine we'll be hearing more about it and maybe seeing a little bit more of it throughout the year. All else failing, your good old friend Alien Theory will still be around. As this year comes to a close, I just wanted to take the time out to thank you for watching this channel and for all of your support. As I look back on the year, I realize there was much more I wanted to achieve in 2023. From my personal life, you might be aware that I took a few months off producing videos for the channel as I dealt with a personal family tragedy. I have to say it has been the worst year of my life. I continue to carry a sadness with me that will surely never fully go away. I think the old saying is true, though, that happiness is having something to look forward to. I resolve to seek happiness in my personal life, and as a fan of the Alien series, I look forward to a new Alien movie in 2024. I look forward to making new Alien Theory videos. And trust me, this makes me very happy. Sharing a love for all things alien on this platform gives me a sense of joy and fulfillment that I never thought possible. I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for you. And I look forward to more exploration of the alien world together. 
So for 2024, I want to be more active on the channel, have more fun with it, try new things, and altogether just keep doing what I love and what makes me happy. I'm wishing that for myself, and I wish that for you, and for whatever makes you happy, that you get to experience it to the fullest in the new year. On a final note, I would like to give a specific thank you to Lady Anne, who I'm sure you may be familiar with from the closing of my videos. She's a big supporter of the channel, and a personal friend. And between us, we have two PhDs. She's let me know of a special event that is right up our alley, and very easy to participate in if it captures your interest. We are searching for life beyond the stars. That's the big deal that NASA has in store. The Europa Clipper mission. This is the mission objective according to the NASA website. Europa Clipper's main science goal is to determine whether there are places below the surface of Jupiter's icy moon, Europa, that could support life. The mission's three main science objectives are to understand the nature of the ice shell and the ocean beneath it, along with the moon's composition and geology. The mission's detailed exploration of Europa will help scientists better understand the astrobiological potential for habitable worlds beyond our planet. NASA's Europa Clipper spacecraft will perform dozens of close flybys of Jupiter's moon Europa, gathering detailed measurements to investigate the moon. The spacecraft, in orbit around Jupiter, will make nearly 50 flybys of Europa at closest approach altitude, as low as 16 miles above the surface, soaring over a different location during each flyby to scan nearly the entire moon. The Europa Clipper spacecraft is heading there with a message from Earth, and you're invited to send your name along for the journey. You can actually fill out a brief form, add yourself to the mission, and your name will make the journey along with Europa etched onto a microchip inside the craft. I think that's pretty cool. I've actually done it myself, and I'll leave a link below if you'd like to learn more and get your name included. But as I understand, the deadline is January 1st, so if you're interested, please act fast. Along with the names of the participating Earthlings, Europa's message in a bottle will be containing a poem written by U.S. Poet Laureate Ada Limon. This is titled, In Praise of Mystery, A Poem for Europa, which I will close this video with. Arching under the night sky inky, with black expansiveness, we point to the planets we know. We pin quick wishes on stars. From Earth, we read the sky as if it is an unerring book of the universe, expert and evident. Still, there are mysteries below our sky. The whale song, the songbird singing, its call in the bough of a wind-shaken tree. We are creatures of constant awe, curious at beauty, at leaf and blossom, at grief and pleasure, sun and shadow. And it is not darkness that unites us, not the cold distance of space, but the offering of water, each drop of rain, each rivulet, each pulse, each vein. O second moon, we too are made of water, a vast, and beckoning seas. We too are made of wonder, of great and ordinary loves, of small invisible worlds, of a need to call out through the dark. Here's an alien. Uh, alien. It's an alien and it's painting Easter eggs. See the Easter eggs? It's painting. Oh, it's painting? And it's eating cereal here. You see it eating cereal? Oh. Yeah, isn't that cool? Please. And he's playing a video game. See the video game? Remember when you were playing the video game? He's building a model. That's the dropship. Here he's washing the dishes. Look at Dodger. Yeah, he's at the doctor. Well, no, he's at, actually at the dentist. See the dentist? He helps your teeth. He's, uh, he's scared. He's scared because he has sharp teeth. A sharp teeth? Yeah, he could eat you. Ha! Oh, that one. <laughs> that one, he's washing the dishes. And look, he accidentally gets acid on it. And right? then it puts a hole in the dishes. A hole? There's a hole. It's dirty, that one. Oh, no, it spit. Yeah, he spit on it, and he has acid spit. And it burns a hole through the dish there. It burns? It burns. The hot water? It's, it's very hot. The hot water? It's hotter than hot water. It's acid. It burns. What about this? Okay. It's a birthday! Oh, it's a birthday, birthday party! It's a birthday party! Oh! See, you like the candles! Oh, the cake? You like the candles on the cake? Look at that way! Look at that way! Look at that way! That's LV426. The bugle hole? 
Here. Look, you read a book. Read a book. This is him reading a book. Oh, there's a blue one. It's a blue book called Nostromo.